Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Again, my name is Rocky Domingo. I'm the incoming principal for uh, Bishop Alamany. So again, I want to welcome you for our senior class um, talk and welcome back to school. Um, if we could start with prayer, um, Dr. Hamilton sends his um, regrets in not being able to join us. He would normally open the, the um, our call with prayer uh, and with a short welcome, uh, but because he has family um, obligations that he's unable to come, um, but he sends his prayers and well wishes to everyone, and we'll see everyone on Tuesday when we come back to school. So if we can start off and put ourselves in the presence of God in prayer, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the gift of Catholic education, for the sacrifice of our parents um, and their families in making that a reality for our community at Bishop Alamany. Please bless our teachers and their families and our staff and their families. And as we continue our conversation, um, so that we grow with you um, and be with us as we journey along for our, senior, for our last year for our seniors um, this coming year. And we ask this and we ask all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Again, welcome everybody and thank you for coming. Um, just a short introduction about myself. Um, this is my 20, close to two decades worth um, coming into Catholic education for the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. Um, I've been involved in elementary school and high school uh, as a teacher as well as an administrator. Um, as for myself, I um, have experienced Catholic school either as a pre and pre K um, in elementary school and high school, um, college, uh, graduate school, and even in seminary. So I understand the benefits of Catholic education, not only for the individuals, uh, but also for families and for our community. So like Dr. Hamilton, um, he and I are very much committed uh, to Catholic education and providing the best uh, quality Catholic education we provide for our students and our community at Bishop, at Bishop Alamany. Um, just a little bit about myself as well. I have, um, Kathleen and I have two sons. Um, Joseph is a senior at um, LaSalle High School and I have Owen who is in third grade. Um, he'll be attending uh, St. Mary's, uh, no, St. Elizabeth's over in Altadena. So I brought home a souvenir uh, from Vegas that keeps on eating and just doesn't go away. <laughs> but we're very blessed to have them. Um, and so it's part of our family. And just as another side note, we uh, recently adopted a, our, our first family dog. And so Tess is, completes the round of full family for us. So um, thank you again for um, everyone's warm welcome and prayers um, in my sh in being here. And in the few times I've met a couple of your parents, a couple of you. Um, uh, on campus, but also today recently at the used uniform sale. So it's nice seeing everybody. Uh, Mr. Sithi, if you could show the first slide. I want to thank again Mr. Sithi for who is going to who's moderating uh, tonight's talk. Um, and after my uh, brief uh, comments, um, the bulk of my uh, bulk of our conversation will be directed to questions and answers from you uh, and hoping to be able to answer and clarify any questions you might have um, as we begin the school year and your last year um, at Bishop Alamany. Um, so Mr. Sidney, we could go for the first, first slide again. Next slide. <clears throat> One of the things that we are, as you know, that we are all going to start uh, remotely. So for us, um, as all the Catholic schools and the archdiocese, um, and all schools in California, um, we will be starting remotely. Um, and our first day of school will be on August uh, 12th. Um, students will receive their class schedules by email on Sunday, August 9th. Um, and that email will contain their class schedules, um, their periods, as well as the teachers that they will be assigned to in their courses. Um, when we do start remote distance learning, um, everything will be synchronous on Zoom. So the schedule that we presented that's published on our website um, will be the one that will will stay all the way through until we switch to in-person hybrid. And then we have a different um, schedule for that as well too. Um, but for uh, synchronous learning for um, remote distance, it will be for an hour and we will have three blocks and then a lunch period um, and then half hour um, classes or optional time for uh, for classes for students to be able to come in afterwards as well too. Um, 
the tutoring times are optional for the students except for those taking honors and AP classes. Um, we realize that there is a lot of material that needs to be covered. Um, and so that half hour in the afternoon will um, allow then for the teacher to the instructor to make sure that the, that the material that they're covering gets covered for the full day <clears throat> for, for, for what they need to be done on that one. Um, and then when we do return to in-person hybrid, um, our classrooms will be fitted with cameras. Um, so students will be able to um, participate um, via live streamed. Um, so half the class will be in school and then half the class will be um, at home. When we switch to in-person hybrid, um, students will be going to school five days a week, um, <clears throat> but they will be going in school for two days and then remote for three days um, on, on that, on, on via Zoom. But when they do go on remote, um, they will be live streamed so that they can interact in real time um, with their instructor and with their classmates as well. Um, dress code will be, policy, will be uh, enforced. One of the things that we've learned um, uh, from that short pivot when we had to go to remote distance learning a couple months ago is that many of our family members and our faculty members um, and our community stress the need for structure um, not only for the students but also for the day so one of the things in helping the students uh, achieve that structure not only in, in having times that are period one period two period three but also that dress code policy we're asking then that all students, when they are in class, to have their cameras on and that they wear a Bishop Alemany uh, polo or a Bishop Alemany sweatshirt um, during that time. It's a, as all of us as adults have, have experienced, that this seems to be like the 69th day of April. Every, every day seems to meld and everything, every day seems to be the same. Um, one of the things that's really important then is to be able to break that. Um, and to allow our kids to have that mindset that this is school. And the more that they are um, acclimated to having school again, and the quicker that we go back to school in person, either in hybrid or full, um, the quicker and the easier that transition will be. And so then we are asking them that students rewear their polo, uh, Bishop Alamany polo or a sweatshirt um, when class is in session. Um, the Wednesdays, um, as you can tell from the schedule, that we provided that the Wednesdays is, is a minimum day that ends at 1230. However, <clears throat> in those days in the afternoon, um, we will have activities sponsored by the ASB or by campus ministry um, or by clubs or even by different organizations or different um, uh, groups uh, throughout the school um, to build community with each other. And then students are invited to participate in that just as they are invited to participate in, in any of the activities that we do have um, when we are in person. And so those are intentional um, and then they will be um, calendared out. Um, you will be receiving a calendar um, as well, um, but the calendar unlike in previous years has taken, has given you all the dates for the full year um, with all the events. Um, given that this is a fluid situation, that this is our new normal, um, our calendars are in two and three month increments. Um, and so we will do it by quarter. Um, we will push out those calendars um, and then let you know what is happening in then. So in the, in the time that we switch to in-person hybrid, that calendar is going to change because the events are going to be different. And then when we switch into full learning, um, again, those, those dates will be changed as well too. So in the midst of trying to prepare, um, but also to let you know ahead of time, um, given the parameters of the fluid situation, we are, we're providing a calendars for the, for, for the first quarter and we'll provide quarterly calendars uh, after that as well too. Uh, next slide, Mr. Sithi. <clears throat> when we do return back to school, um, we are optimizing the classrooms so that they will be, that they will hold at least for a minimum of 16 students. Um, the chairs and the desks will be clearly marked as to which chairs will be student seats and those that are not. And then those chairs that are remaining in the classrooms will act as natural barriers. Um, the maintenance crew and staff and facilities crew um, are doing that as we speak. And so the, the seats are six feet apart. Um, and then they are, um, depending then on the orientation of the classroom is where our class or where, where the, the cameras will be located. Um, teachers have been coming in and they have set of input into their classrooms as to where they would like to teach. Um, but again, with the fluidity of, of the situation, um, you know, the, the, how we 
how we teach it really is going to be dependent upon certain parameters that are given to us because of our new normal. Um, the classrooms will be marked um, with either 10 or 12 feet of teacher and student zones. And each teacher's desk will have a clear barrier um, so they can still speak with the student um, in tutoring times or times that need to engage with them. But we are still um, protecting and making sure that the safety of both the teacher and the student are, are, are kept in place. Uh, temperature checks will be conducted for everyone arriving on campus. Um, when we do switch to in-person hybrid, um, we will have two stations that students will be checking into. They will be in the alumni hall, and then they will also be at the gym. Um, regarding when they do that, we'll have more information when, when that happens. Um, but masks will be required for everyone on campus, and that includes students. And students must bring their own mask. And the only time that they aren't wearing the mask is when they're eating um, or drinking. Um, hand, 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 hand sanitation stations are probably, will be prominently located throughout the campus. And we have that already in place as well too. And we'll bring them out um, when, when we come back uh, in person in hybrid. And then the outside eating areas will also, are also being reconfigured to accommodate all social distancing protocols and public health guidelines. That includes the cafeteria as well too. Um, and so they'll be clearly marked as uh, one-way entrances, one-way exits. Um, and then they will, the lines will be clearly marked with six feet apart. So when students line up for food and line up for, uh, for snacks, and they will be still, um, have the, still have the social distancing protocols and public health guidelines still in place. Uh, next slide, Mr. Sifi. So in terms of student expectations, one of the things that we have worked on and we've worked on with the department chairs and the faculty is to ensure um, not only that our students will be successful, but they will thrive um, in this new remote distance learning. Um, and so we will as much, and we wanna provide as much structure uh, for our families and students as, as much as we can uh, in order to make sure then that that structure um, really lends itself or allows itself then for our students to be successful, uh, whether it's going to be done remotely or in-person hybrid. Um, attendance will be taken um, each period um, and students who are on campus um, and then those that are absent, uh, an absence will count the same as if for an online course as if they were absent in person. Um, as the student handbook says, students will be marked absent if they arrive 20 minutes late um, after class begins. Um, but just as a note, we do still want the students to, if they're coming in minute 21, minute 22, minute 25, minute 26, we are still inviting the students to be able to come to class. There is a value, an immense value for our students to be, to still participate in the class and to be able to have some face time um, with their instructors and also to be with their classmates. Um, Three tardies will equal an absence, and then 12 absence will result in a student not receiving credit. Um, as usual then, are expected to contact the school if their student will be absent, whether that's gonna be in person or online. Um, but I think the key, you know, it's great that you contact us. I think it's, it's, it's also key that you contact your your students' teachers as well too, to let them know that their student will not be attending. Um, that really is important sense of communication going back and forth, especially if there are um, projects or they can just let you know in terms of what kind of homework they missed or anything of that sort so that they are not too far behind. Um, in addition to the regular behavior expectations, um, when we do come back um, in-person hybrid, uh, students are also expected then to uh, keep with the public health guidelines and social distance protocols established by the school. So students then are required to wear masks and they should wear masks um, and students should still um, be six feet apart um, when they shouldn't be congregating. Um, and if a dean or a uh, a faculty member asks them then to 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 distance. Then then the expectation is that they will um, that they will comply. Um, that is important not just for their own personal safety, but also safety then of all our students as well as for our faculty and for our community as well. Uh, next slide, Mr. Sithi. Then finally, the question of athletics. Um, at, at, athletics is. Uh, 
uh, an important part of the high school experience. Um, and it adds a sense of normalcy, but also sense adds a greater sense of community um, for, for, many of, for many of our students. And many of our students are, are, are participate um, in, in our sports. Um, and so, but the safety of our student athletes and coaches is our top priority. Um, CIF came out with a schedule um, for um, fall, winter, and spring sports, but that schedule has been abbreviated to 72 days. So all seasons will be 72 days, and some seasons, as you know, might be longer and some might be shorter, um, but uh, all seasons, all sports will now be 72 days. Um, and that includes uh, the first day of practice all the way to preseason games, to league games, and all the way to playoffs and championships, and so it's all in 72 days. When we do um, practices, um, temperature checks and screenings will be taken prior to each practice, um, similar to those when we enter school. Um, the summertime rules are extended until December, which basically means since that there are no league contests and no league sports that are in play uh, during the fall, the summertime rules will be extended, which means that they can still practice, um, but it's gonna be under uh, phase one of what CIF allows us to do, which means that it's just outside conditioning. Um, teams will practice in pods. Um, they will not handle any materials whatsoever in terms of switching balls or um, bats or, or footballs or anything. It's only outdoor conditioning only. Um, and then um, the most important part about this slide is that there will be an uh, athletic department parent Zoom call with Mr. Erbach, our athletic department uh, uh, our athletic director uh, on September 13th at 6 p.m. And I invite um, you to join and we will be able to answer um, more, more questions uh, specifically geared towards athletics. But if you have specific questions <clears throat> regarding team practices or about specific teams, um, I ask you then to contact Mr. Erbach um, at his email address at derbach at alamany.org um, or just wait until September 13th to ask those questions at 6 p.m. I will be meeting with the head coaches next week um, to try to um, establish those summertime rules and also uh, trying to figure out the, how practices are going to be worked and how they are going to be scheduled. Um, although we do have a, a vast uh, uh, campus, um, our outdoor space will be utilized to its maximum because we cannot practice indoors. So the gym will not be used um, at all. Um, weights, the weight rooms will be off limits and all those other things are in place. But we still wanna make sure that the kids are six feet apart, <clears throat> that they are following social distance protocols, not only within teams and pods, uh, but also within the different teams that will be practicing on campus as well too. Um, the next slide, Mr. Sithi. That wraps up my um, uh, comments in terms of uh, coming into school. Um, uh, at this time, I, I, I welcome any questions that you might have and, and hope to be able to answer them. Um, if you have any personal questions or specific inquiries about a student or uh, certain family issues, uh, please directly just email me. And that's my email address at our domingo at alamany.org. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, whether via phone, via Teams, Zoom, um, or in person, I'm happy to meet with you um, either, in either way. Uh, please contact Mrs. De, De Santiago, um, and her email address is there as well, too. Again, I want to thank Mr. Sithi for moderating our talk or our, our, our call this evening, and then he will be reading the questions, and then hopefully I will be having some answers. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mr. Domingo. Good evening, good evening, everybody. Just a few um, reminders. The uh, slideshow that you just saw will be available in PDF form uh, where you found the link to the Zoom meeting. And also in that same page, you probably saw a link to a parent association survey from our wonderful parent association who's been helping us tremendously uh, throughout the years. Um, so they would really appreciate it if you have the time to take the survey that's um, on the page where you found this link. And just a note on that before we begin, I again want to want to thank the Parent Association, especially the Parent Association Executive Board. Um, they've given me a warm welcome and have given great counsel in the short time that I'm there and been very helpful um, in formulating some of these uh, policies um, that we're putting in place for the beginning of the year. And I encourage all our families to join our Parent Association uh, meetings and they are scheduled for the first Tuesday of every month. And those will be posted um, on the website with all the login information. Um, as of for right now, all our meetings will be via, done via Zoom. Um, 
again, I want to stress then uh, the important partnership that we have with our parents um, and being able to collaborate and to ensure that we provide the best quality Catholic education, both for your family, but also for our community. And that can only be done through that collaborative partnership with our parents. Our first question um, is asking for a clarification regarding tutoring times. Uh, it reads, tutoring times, uh, students accept honors and AP will get tutoring. Can you please clarify how that works? Sure. So the times that we've allotted, um, one, of the, uh, one of the things that we've learned when we went to remote distance learning is um, making sure that not only there's structure, but there's also an opportunity then for students to be able to um, engage in the teachers in, in, in tutoring or in a one-to-one -one fashion um, or in a smaller group. So what was really important and built into that schedule is then an opportunity then for those students to be able to interact or to ask their teachers, um, basically giving them office hours. So those students that are not in honors or in AP classes, uh, those tutoring times are optional. However, um, teachers might be in, in a lesson and how they deliver a, a lecture, they might need another additional time. They will let you know whether that's not optional and that they'd ask the students to come back in. But for the most part, um, we've built that in so that students that need extra help um, can be can still have that even though we're remote. Um, and teachers will be there for the full half hour if there is one, two, three, or 16 students available. And then they will use that time accordingly. How will students social distance in morning at drop-off temperature locations? Um, how will they be? I'm sorry, can you repeat that again, Mr. Sister? Sure, that's my fault for stumbling on that one. <laughs> how will students social distance in the morning at drop off at temperature check state check locations? Sure, so similar to um, what we had today, if, if you were, um, again, I'll, I'll, I'll put in a plug for our uh, gently used uniform sale, and that was this, this evening, um, and then they'll, they'll continue again for tomorrow. All proceeds will go to our theater department, um, and then they're, and they're more than, they'll, Happy to see you and come by. And there's a lot of a lot of good uniforms still uh, available to be bought. Um, again, like in most stores or um, in places that you public places that you go, they have hash marks where they mark off six feet uh, from each other. Um, we will have the same thing in terms of the temperature checks. Uh, the temperature checks will be uh, done by faculty and staff. When they get on campus, they'll either report to alumni hall or to the gym. Um, and if they cleared their temperature checks and the screening, um, they'll be given a wristband, most likely a wristband, um, uh, for that day. And then that will allow them to go to school. Um, if they come in and their temperature is high um, or they, you know, they feel sick, um, and then we will not, um, then we'll contact the parents and, and not allow the student to, to come in. Um, when they are finished and they are going to classes, uh, there will be supervision outside um, to make sure that you do not congregate and that they will still remain six feet apart. They can certainly use uh, the benches or they can use the, um, the picnic tables and those will be clearly marked because they'll be ready for, uh, for outdoor seating and for eating areas. There'll be three to a table um, and then they'll have tables that are um, separated and those that are X'd out as well too. So then, but there will be supervision by adults and by faculty and by staff to make sure that, that we still abide by social distance protocols. How robust is the cleaning protocol when school resumes? Um, it's robust in the sense that we will clean the classrooms um, um, every night um, with the cleaning crew, um, the times that they come back. And then every Wednesday, there will be no classes on Wednesday. That will be a deep, deep dive or a deep clean um, for, um, for the school. Um, and then we have bought um, all the materials that needed to make that happen. We have misters, Mr. Melendez has those misters ready so that our classrooms can be cleaned efficiently and quickly um, so that we have a lot of classrooms. Um, so then we wanna make sure that all of them are cleaned um, for, for students coming in. If a student is not in dress code, what will happen? A um, couple of things then, so that's a simple fix. Um, a student comes in and is not in dress code, we, the teacher will ask uh, the student to simply you know, turn off their camera and then just put on the Bishop Alamany uh, uh, polo or Bishop Alamany sweatshirt. And then they can simply resume the class. There's no, it's just a simple conversation, a simple reminder. Um, like I said, I have a, I have a senior <laughs> as well. I totally understand if they can come to school and they roll out and they're not wearing it. And then it's just a simple conversation. What are the plans for the senior activities? Um, uh, I, I, the, uh, 
I, I stumble because I, I understand that there are a lot of traditions in place in high school, and I'm beginning to learn what those traditions are at Bishop Alamany. Um, so the traditions then of the Senior Sunrise, um, all those activities that um, our seniors are counting on um, are still on the books. Um, but given the uh, situation that we have now, um, we will um, put those on again as soon as um, we're, we're, we are able to. Uh, senior prom date has already been slated. Um, we have that already. And then we, our deposit um, is already in place um, uh, with a screwball. Um, those dates are already, um, are already there. It really then depends on on, on, on the situation then with county health um, and, and government officials, whether that's gonna happen. Um, but we, Dr. Hamilton, myself, faculty um, and staff are committed in trying to give as much normalcy to our seniors as possible and to give them the best send off as their senior year as possible. And that includes keeping in line with a lot of the, the Alamany traditions um, and that we will hope to be able to have those in person um, when we are willing to, when 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 we are when we are able to, uh, based on uh, government health uh, mandates. What will occur with fundraising activities? Sure. Um, so fundraising activities um, or responsibilities by families, as well as uh, family service hours and Christian service hours for students, will be prorated. Um, when we return back to campus. So depending on when we return back to campus, um, that is when those hours will be uh, prorated for the year. Um, so right now we're not able to give it a determination as what that is because we don't know when we're coming back, but as soon as we do, and then um, it's, uh, it's a permanent or a more constant uh, situation where we know we'll be in, then we will, I'm sorry, then we will go ahead and, and prorate those hours, um, both for the Christian service hours, uh, the parent service hours, as well as the fundraising uh, um, obligations to our parents. On August 11th and 12th, where will the students be located? Do seniors come on August 11th? Um, August 11th, only if you're a new senior, um, only if you're a transfer into the school. Um, August 11th is our freshman and new student orientation day. Um, and so um, if your family, if you're a brand new uh, member to our community and you're a senior, welcome. Um, and then that'll be the day that you come in. But for most seniors, the first day of school will be on August 12th. Um, the login information will be provided for you um, when you receive the email on August 9th um, regarding your class schedules. Um, once you do that, you log on Canvas, um, and then they will give you the Zoom directions as to where you go for period one, period two, and period three. As far as the 12 days of absences, if a child got COVID, can that number be increased based on how long it may take them to get well? Yes, that's absolutely correct. And so uh, the, um, the 12 days is simply the ones that we have for uh, that has not taken consideration COVID, has not con taken consideration all the, all the, um, uh, the, the normalcy that we're having in this, uh, in these past couple months. Um, there certainly will be accommodations made for students that have, um, that fall ill to COVID um, and, and need to recover. Um, that time, the, the 12 days does not, uh, will not start ticking. Um, there are, there are uh, we are making accommodations, not only from the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, Department of Catholic Schools, but also uh, School of Ed as well too. I mean, uh, Department of Education for the State of California. Who will control crowded hallways as seen in Georgia photos recently? Um, hallways will be regulated by faculty um, and staff, and so it'll be hands on deck. So even though we have um, a limited number of kids that are there, um, all the staff members will be are already on um, present. So the faculty and staff will be um, will be help regulate hallways and hallways will be clearly marked as one way hallways in terms of one way directions. So if a student then is in L3 and their classroom is in L, L2, um, they would have to go all the way around in order for them to, uh, to go back into, um, into the next classroom. At the end of April, Alamany received a 2 million PPP loan. According to the Alamany website, our tuition goes to the hiring and payment of teachers. Are the teachers now being paid twice or are the parents being charged full price for partial experience? 
Sure. So uh, that's a two-part question in terms of uh, being able to answer it. Um, regarding the PPP, um, the uh, PPP is to cover um, all the staff um, and the payroll, as you know, uh, for Bishop Alamany uh, in terms of the staff and, and, and faculty members that are there. And then we were able to pay them and also uh, for the coaches who their, their seasons did not happen, so we were able to, uh, to pay them as well through, through that PPP. With regarding to um, a diminished tuition, I think for the coming year, um, the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, Department of Catholic Schools, um, has made a commitment that although the learning environment has changed, um, we are committed in making sure that the learning experience does not change um, for our students and the quality of Catholic education still remains high and that we are committed in providing that education to the utmost uh, best uh, way that we can, um, even though the environment has changed from being in class um, to being remotely. Um, with the reduction, then, so um, myself and Dr. Hamilton um, meet regionally with all the presidents and principals in our area. And a decision has been made not only within uh, the Department of Catholic Schools and the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, but all the regional schools that we are normally partnered with, um, Paraclete, uh, St. Francis, um, St. Genevieve's, uh, Chaminade, Crespi, um, and, and Notre Dame, um, have not reduced um, their, um, their tuition. Um, it is our belief then that our tuition, um, there is still that gap that, that's still covered by, um, by fundraising and by all those, and by the uh, by uh, development, um, but it is our belief and we, that, that we stand by the product that we, we, that we have. We acknowledge that there have been some missteps, um, especially in the, uh, how we've uh, done remote learning uh, so quickly. And I have to commend the teachers um, for being able to do that switch uh, very quickly in a matter of one day and have a PD um, and then switching fully to remote and still being able to have that, uh, provide that, um, uh, that education remotely. And we recognize that there have been missteps, and so in trying to uh, make sure that those missteps do not happen, um, we're adding more structure into the day and adding more accountability um, so that we uh, can ensure not only the success of our students, but also that they will thrive in this new kind of environment, both for our teachers as well as for our families. Um, and then with, uh, like, um, all companies and all businesses um, that have uh, been hit by COVID, um, I am keenly aware, and as Dr. Hamilton are, and I are keenly aware, that many of our families have also experienced uh, financial challenges and difficulties as a result of COVID. And that Dr. Hamilton and I are firmly committed uh, to making sure that any family that experiences these financial challenges, especially for your senior, for our seniors, um, to be able to provide them the assistance and the aid so that they will be able to graduate from Bishop Alamany. Um, it is a, my philosophy as a Catholic educator, and, and it is the philosophy as well of Dr. Hamilton, that any student that we take in, um, that we will do our best to make sure um, that they will graduate. And so that includes any financial resources that we might be able to uh, give um, in order for them to finish uh, at Bishop Alamany. One of the things that um, we're uh, very proud of as well is that we're able to um, give assistance uh, to a lot of our families and that has not diminished. And although our um, uh, we have uh, a limited number of resources because our enrollment, as you know, um, some families have left and that dictates certainly what we can do. Um, it still has not stopped us from being able to help those families, especially our seniors, uh, to be able to finish and to be able to, to, to graduate from Bishop Alamy. And that is very important for us. Do the teachers have minimum requirements for virtual classes curriculums, i.e. Zoom meetings or live discussions for each class session? Sure, they do. Um, again, that's uh, addressing one of those missteps, and I think it's just a matter then of uh, making sure that there is much more uniformity and um, um, standard um, that the parents, our parents, and our community can count on. Um, our teachers will be there at, at, at first bell um, at 8.30, and they will continue class until 9.30. Uh, the medium by which they present their material will be different based on the discipline that they teach. Um, some might do small breakout rooms and some might lecture for the full hour. Um, so I hope not. Um, some might um, uh, 
do um, small group sessions or they might have a pre-recorded video. Um, they might have other means to be able to do it. It depends on the discipline. But teachers will be there for the full hour and every teacher will be um, um, at their half hour tutoring time as well too. Are honors and AP students required to attend tutoring times? Yes, they are. In uniform. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I <thought I'd> <laughs> if a student or teacher is infected, what is the school's protocol? Will school close and quarantine for 14 days and then reside? Because there is no way of knowing how many students or teachers will be infected unless the whole school quarantines. Sure, that is an actual good question. Um, there are certain protocols that have been in place, not only from the Department of Catholic Schools and the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, but there are protocols mandated through us from county health and public officials. Um, as soon as a student or a teacher tests positive, then there are protocols that are set in place and then we will initiate those protocols and let those families and let our staff and our community know immediately. As many of you know, we are, um, when we begin school, it's going to be flu season fairly, um, fairly shortly afterwards. And so a student then, um, you know, who goes home sick or is sick um, should be tested and then won't be returned back into school without a doctor's note. Um, if it's the flu, then it's, you know, it's a, as parents, then we, we make sure the student is fine and we do not let the student back in um, or we don't send our student back into school until uh, at least 24 hours after the fever broke. Um, but now with COVID and uh, with the coronavirus in play, um, if a student is sick, uh, then they do need a doctor's note and they need to be clear of, they do the temperature checks, they do their screening, and then they will be allowed to come back in. How are extracurricular activities going to work if they will be taking place? Will the school support club activities that aren't athletic? Yes, we are. Um, in fact, on September 23rd, on a Wednesday, will be club a day. Um, club, um, teacher moderators um, and clubs are still going to function. Um, and then they are committed in making sure that that happens, whether it's French club with um, Mrs. Diaz um, or ceramics club or uh, Mrs. Wargo with my story and me. Um, all those are still in play. Um, we want to provide as much normalcy to our students um, as possible. And we recognize that the experience of high school um, really needs to be coupled with a lot of these social activities and athletics and, and all these things that we normally um, associated with high school and remember high school so fondly with. Um, and we wanna be able to provide that for our students and our community. Um, they will still be in, happening, um, but they will be happening remotely and then they will be happening at the creativity um, of their moderator and of their, um, of their teacher faculty, uh, faculty moderator. Will extra seating be created for lunch? Um, well, since uh, uh, half the school will, only, will be in, in, in session, actually a fourth of the school will be in session because half will be in play and then the other half will be in there. Um, there, there we have enough seating to be able to accommodate um, the students that we will have on campus. Um, they, like again, the, the benches and the picnic tables will be clearly marked. Um, there'll be three per, per picnic table and then the benches will be, um, will be clearly marked as well too. Um, they will be spaced out um, so that they will make accommodations for six feet apart um, between benches and between tables as well as between uh, students sitting um, and the picnic tables themselves. What's the advantage of attending Alamany online, paying full tuition, rather than a free or very low cost for a regular online school? Um, that, is a, that, is a, that is a question that you need to answer for your family as well. Um, that is a personal question that um, I hope that you come to the understanding that, um, that what we provide at Bishop Alamany is an added value, a service that is simply goes beyond the academics that can be provided. Our students certainly do thrive academically and will thrive um, with the education that we support and, and, and give, but it is also part of the community that we hope to build. Um, I can recognize the, uh, the challenges that we have remotely, uh, being able to do that, and I'm sure that you can recognize those as well too, uh, but we are committed in making sure that happens. Um, whether you choose to send your child to Bishop Alamany really is a, is a personal question, uh, a personal question that you need to answer for your family as well, too. It is my understanding, and it's the understanding of everyone else, that sending a student to, to Catholic school is a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice for the family to be able to make that a priority um, for their students, for their, uh, for their family, and for their community, and I, and I value that. 
and I value the, the sacrifice that many of our families uh, continue to do and to give um, and provide um, and allowing for their students to experience an Alamany education. Um, whether you choose to go to public schools or any other schools on that really is a question that you need to, to, to answer um, and then um, as a family, uh, whether that is a priority for you. Um, I am happy to discuss that with you individually. I'm happy to talk to you more about it um, in terms of what can, we can provide um, for you as an individual uh, or individual families. Um, but again, it, it really is, I recognize the sacrifice of families. I recognize the challenges, the financial challenges that families face. Um, and then we are here to help. And especially for our senior class, for those students that are seniors that have gone through the system of Bishop Alamany for the past three years and to now be um, in this new kind of normal. I completely understand, not only as an administrator, but I completely understand as a parent of a senior going to Catholic school as well too. Um, and so um, I'd be happy to discuss that with you individually or collectively with any other families um, that want to talk about that. I, I can certainly um, not only sympathize, but empathize with you and hopefully we can come up with the right answer. Uh, Ms. Chavez, are you going to say something? I mean, I could, but I don't want to get, like, jump into the next question, but I think I can offer a little bit of a helpful perspective on that question. Um, for those of you who don't know, I am, I think I taught them a lot of your, your students, but um, I was a graduate of Bishop Alamany, and I can tell you from personal experience going through Bishop Alamany for four years, going through Catholic education, it set me up for the rest of my life. And I'm not just speaking academically, although I did go on to several universities and I've earned degrees, I was prepared for that, but what Alamini did was prepare me in mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and it created a whole new trajectory for my life. And I wouldn't have had that unless I had the teachers that Alamini had at the time, and many of whom are still there. And I know that there were challenges in March when we went to distance learning. And I can honestly tell you that I think every school had challenges. We had to do something that we had never done before right? In one day, 24 hours, we had to turn a whole curriculum into an online. And I understand that that is, you may have seen glitches with that because we were all learning at the time and trying to figure it all out. But since that time, as Mr. Domingo was saying, we have really been working hard to develop a quality curriculum and kind of fix any kinks that may have been there. So I think that the best thing to say is that Alamany is not just offering a quality education, but even though we're going to be online for a little bit, I think we're offering an extra added bonus of really giving that spiritual mental and emotional guidance that a lot of the kids need and that's still going to be there so i hope that that does help show that it's really worth it it pays dividends for the rest of your life so thank you very much for jump, joining me in again Ms. chavez we really appreciate it um, thank you Ms. chavez fun fact uh, Ms. chavez and i um, i am also into alamany and we uh were in anything goes together uh she <laughs> was on stage uh, i believe as a dancer and i was behind the scenes in tech group yeah. so nothing has changed uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes we love Alamini. We came back. So, and we just want to keep giving what was, what was given to us. We want to give to your children. So I think you're going to see that. Thank, Thank you very you much. So Thank you so much, Ms. Chavez. Um, actually, pretty good segue into the next question with Catholic education. Will Kairos happen this year? Kairos is, uh, Kairos is uh, slated to happen um, again, but then given the fluidity of the situation, um, we did schedule four Kairoses to, to happen this year. We're, we're hoping one will happen um, in uh, early in October. Um, one of the things that, as you know, Ms. Sackhorn, uh, Sackhorn is, is now in charge of the Kairos retreats. Um, we are thinking about having one early, but depending on, on the site, um, it will be for our Christian leadership kids, um, and so we will uh, use them, and so then they will have, be ready uh, when we will have uh, Kairoses, uh, hopefully in the spring. Um, but then right now we're um, we're on hold as everything else until we get the mandate from uh, from public health to be able to continue, but they are being scheduled. If a student needs to change classes on the schedule, what is the procedure? Sure, so, uh, when students will be receiving their um, uh, uh, Sorry, they'll be receiving their schedules in uh, this Sunday, um, uh, at, uh, August 9th, uh, excuse me. Um, and then if there are any changes that need to be happened, or if you notice that a student, if your student doesn't have the class that they signed up for, or they're given a class that they have no idea why they have that class, um, Mrs. Arnold, as well as Mrs. White, uh, or their 
or their counselor um, is ready to be able to make those changes. And those first two weeks, um, like always, are the times to be able to make that happen. And if I could just chime in, I am here. So hi, Ms. Oh, Arnold. hi, Ms. Um, Arnold. Um, so in terms of student schedule changes, um, the counselors are actually putting together a Google form, and they're going to send that out to every student via Canvas. Um, so if there is a need to request any sort of a change for whatever the reason might be, um, students can fill out that form, and then counselors will be um, setting up like individual emails or phone calls um, with students to um, remedy whatever you know concerns there might be. Um, like Mr. Domingo said, it'll be for the first two weeks. So in the first week of school, um, counselors are gonna be tackling anything that was a glitch. Let's say a student had two fourth periods and not a fifth period, maybe because something was offered in those fourth periods that wasn't in fifth, et cetera, et cetera. So the first week, anything that's a glitch they'll handle. And the second week, anything that's just, that is you know, more of a request, um, they'll kind of take a look at those and handle those requests, but it'll all be via Google Forms on Canvas. And just another note, I want to congratulate Ms. Arnold. She is, uh, she was uh, AP, uh, assistant principal, but um, beginning this year, um, she is now the vice principal for Bishop Alamany. It's been a promotion that was long overdue and well-deserved. So again, on, on behalf of Dr. Hamilton, and we just want to make sure that, that everyone knows that, that, that you are now the new vice principal um, of Bishop Alamany. So congratulations and thank you for all the work that you've done. Also, I want to, I, I, I did not, I want to thank the teachers also for what they've done prior to making sure that um, what they've done in the spring. Um, and I, I, I appreciate Mrs. Chavez for chiming in on that. Um, they have done an incredible job in making that happen. And that was through a lot of leadership through uh, Ms. Arnold. So thank you very much to you as well as to the faculty. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Ms. Arnold. Um, when will we receive our school schedule? Oh, you'll see school, school schedule um, August 9th um, uh, via email with email that the families have registered on uh, with the school. When the transition to the hybrid schedule occurs, how will siblings be scheduled to stay together or at home with, sorry, or at home or at the school? Sure, Mrs. Arnold, as well as Mrs. White, have done a fantastic job in making sure that the cohorts, whether it's Cardinal and Gold, um, that families are staying together um, and that siblings um, are, are placed in the same um, cohort so that it's a less of a, a burden to, to families um, or an ad, a less, um, less stress on families than having to, bring, um, to come to school twice. Why are class times so short? Should an online school be from 8 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. so the students get their full education and required hours by State of California? Um, the, that's a two-part question then. In terms of the minutes then um, that are dictated by the State of California have been modified as a result of, of COVID. Um, we are still keeping in line with that, but also we are recognizing then from what we've learned um, when online uh, classes as well as doing um, having done this for the past couple months and, and using best practices, students do not function well with classes that extend past an hour. Um, and so we have made it a conscious effort to put the structure in place, but that structure then allows then for the optimal learning, um, both for the delivery of the materials, but also for the optimal learning for the student. Um, and that's why for that half hour, for the students in the afternoon is added. Um, that allows then for the students to not only take a break from the screens, um, uh, but also then will allow them to be able to continue um, with the material that needs to be put in there. So they will receive their full minutes um, that, that, that's given to them so that they can maximize uh, the learning as well as the materials that's given to them. How can we discuss matters with you privately as you suggested? Sure, uh, go ahead and give me, uh, send me an email at rdomingo. Um, at Alamany, Al, or Domingo at Alamany.org, um, or call Mrs. De Santiago uh, in the front office, and she schedules my appointments, and I'll be happy to make an appointment via Zoom, uh, via uh, in person, or by telephone. Um, I'm looking at this quiz as a two-part question here. Um, because in spring there were many challenges and frustrations with cannabis and technical issues that affected students' online learning. That's the first part. Then it goes on. Curious, I've noticed that during junior and senior Zoom meetings, there aren't any teachers from those grades other than the amazing, all caps, Mrs. Chavez. Uh, it would be nice to hear from the teachers themselves to answer some of these questions that are for the teachers themselves. Sure, that's a two more question. Um, part of this is an opportunity then for me to meet uh, 
to meet all of you, although remotely, um, but also an opportunity for you to be able to ask me the questions uh, as much as um, as much as I can be able to answer them. Um, that's what we have back to school night um, for our teachers to be able to, for you to be able to interact with your teachers um, in that form. Um, but also I encourage you then to reach out to the teachers as soon as you find out um, the, uh, the class schedules and you'll have access to who the teachers are for your students. Um, and I encourage you to be able to communicate with them, especially if you want to advocate for your students and knowing what, how best they learn um, and how best they've uh, transitioned into online learning. Um, that would be very helpful. Um, I think it's, it's an opportunity then for you to be able to talk to them and discuss with them on a one-to-one -one basis as to what works and what didn't work. And then anything that you can do to help in terms of that communication process with our teachers ongoing, not just during remote, but also when we come back in person hybrid, I think it will be very helpful. As senior fees are higher, will there be a refund if senior activities cannot be held? Yes, so I'm not going to charge you for prom if it doesn't happen. <laughs> um, all those things are, are in play as well, too. Um, and then um, I think we did give um, a refund for um, our, our, our senior class last year um, because certain things did not happen. Um, certain things will hold as well, too. How is it being decided for hybrid classes to go in or to be online? I don't quite understand the question, Mr. Siffy. Um, yeah, I'll read it again. Um, how is it being decided for hybrid classes to go in or to be online? Um, I'll try to answer that question and just tell me if I didn't do it right. Um, all the classes when we go in person hybrid will be meeting. So the instructors will be in their classrooms uh, five days a week. Um, your students will be in class two days out of the five days, but they will still be in class um, five days out of the week and three of those days will be done remotely. Uh, when the students are, are at home remotely, um, they will be able to interact uh, in real time with their teachers as well as with their instructors uh, through the live stream option on Zoom or on Teams. Where on the campus will the students be located on August 11th and 12th? Uh, students will not be located at all on August 11th and 12th. We are all remote. Um, they will get in their Zoom credentials to be able to begin the first day of class um, via remote. Um, and they'll get those um, when they log into Canvas after they receive their uh, class schedules as well as their instructors um, on August 9th. Will there be cleaning between class period changes? Um, there will be cleaning, but it won't be the deep clean that we will have at the end of the day. Um, teachers, uh, well, the, not, the desk will be wiped down um, for, for when the next group comes in. Um, doorknobs will be wiped down as well too. Um, and then, um, but there will be a, a deeper cleaning um, the evening when, student, when class is, when, when, when there's no, when school is not in session. And then there will be deep cleaning again on Wednesday um, when, when school is not in session for the full day. COVID enters through eyes, nose, or mouth. Are safety glasses or face shields required? Can a student use a face covering or a specific mask such as N95? Sure, that, that's not a problem at all. The safety and, and your well-being of your students in our community is first and foremost. Um, the, the mask issue in terms of an N95 um, certainly is, is, is fine. In terms of facial coverings, um, a student that feels more comfortable having that um, certainly is, is welcome to do that. Um, with the social distancing apart, um, we want to be able to minimize what um, the, the droplets that are coming through, either through the eyes or nose. Uh, the face shields right now, or the mask, are the only things that were required until social, until public health mandates a, a different um, protection. And uh, then, for right now, we are just we are just mandating students to wear masks. But face shields are optional, and if they want to come with face shields, they're more than welcome to. On the topic of senior activities, since dress code will be required, is the school considering giving seniors their usual privileges that can be given remotely, such as free dress on Fridays? Um, if that's a tradition at, uh, at, at Alameda, then I, I, Ms. Ms. Arnold, you wanna chime in on that one? You just, I sure, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, you know, um, depending on how long we are, aren't remote, absolutely the same thing will happen. Um, the senior class, um, you know, officers, um, we'll be meeting with Ms. Erbach, who is our senior class moderator, um, and we will be awarding privileges um, to seniors, similarly to how, you know, that tradition has always held. So one of those things would be, obviously, um, whether or not they could have, um, you know, alternative dress on Fridays, um, as well as other, um, other ideas that are presented to Ms. Erbach from the senior class officers, privileges that they're interested in, but that will definitely happen. 
Will Maskell. Crazy happy. <laughs> Uh, Will Ma no problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> just a uh, heads up on the time, it is 6.57, but of course, you know, we can stay. Uh, sure. Will Mass still take place? Yes, Masses will still take place once a month. We're, we're looking at those in terms of live streaming that as well um, and different opportunities for that to happen. Um, campus ministry will still be happening as well, too. Um, we have uh, Mr. Rubidal. Um, uh, we're very happy that he's been appointed as the new campus minister for, uh, for Bishop Alamany. Um, is coming with a lot of fresh ideas and being able to make it happen, uh, given still the parameters that we are experiencing. Um, Sylvan, I want to apologize for um, the two-part question we responded to earlier. My chat jumps around sometimes automatically, so I did not see the first part of it. But um, she did ask if the tech department's ready for any of the challenges um, with the glitches in Canvas. Um, and I just want to say we're gonna, we definitely um, are, are going to try our best. And I think we're in a really good place right now. Uh, Canvas has been very stable. The teachers are going to receive an increased amount of professional development um, to increase quality and consistency amongst all the classes um, and even more training with things. So I do feel we're in a good place and we are ready and motivated to do the best we can. Um, the next question then would be, I'm sorry, it's jumping around. That's okay, if I can just yeah. jump in. I know oh, go my ahead. time shows 6.58. Um, I'm happy for anyone, I'm happy to stay uh, in terms of um, being able to answer your questions a little longer. I'll go for, uh, how many questions do we have still, Mr. Sippy? Um, if I move it around, it jumps around even more, but we're at 6.49 in the timeline. So it's a, you know, it's, it's really 6.59, but the, oh, the, most, the question we're answering now is at 6.49 and there's a bunch um, below it. Okay. That's fine. Then, and then I, again, want to thank you if you have to leave. I, I completely understand. But thank you again for joining us. Um, we hope you can stay. And I hope to, in the very near future to be able to see each and every one of you um, and uh, to say congratulations on your final year. The next question is, should students attend the class if it's incorrect while they're waiting for the change? If I could maybe chime in on this one. So um, the priority of the counseling office is to help those students who have an incorrect class or a missing period, um, first and foremost. So we hope to address all of those issues within the first um, day or two of school. Um, so I would immediately contact your counselor um, if you feel that there's been some sort of incorrect class. Perhaps you took a class over the summer. Um, we hadn't gotten the transcript from that yet and you were re-enrolled in it for the fall. Um, so please contact your counselor immediately. Um, I would still go to the, the class that you're scheduled to go to so that correct attendance can be taken so that we know that at least you're accounted for. But obviously, if it's the wrong class, that student wouldn't be expected to do homework or participate in kind of those things moving forward. But please do check into the class just so that we can take correct attendance. Um, and then they can take, you know, the rest of that class period to fill out their Google form and contact their counselor. Uh, the next question is, I know things have been tough for many of us. How will you let students know who to talk to if they need that extra support, such as counseling? Um, I, again, talk to the counselors uh, that has been assigned. Uh, Ms. Arnold, um, as well as Mrs. White, are available for all students and student services. Um, happy to be able to, and then if there are any additional referrals that need to be done, um, our, our teachers and faculty members and counseling staff will be um, having a PD and, and helping students transition um, into remote learning again. Um, and that is part of scheduled already into um, from the Department of Catholic Schools as well as the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. They recognize that uh, this is really taking a toll on our students as well as our mental health. And anything that we can do in making that um, making school as stable and as structured as possible, but also helping them ease into um, this new kind of normal um, is really very much important to us. And that's exactly what, uh, just dovetailing into what Ms. Chavez talks about, is the idea then that, that we really do want to make sure that our students are not only you know, making sure that they're not academically whole, but they're also whole in every, every way, of, every, every word possible. Um, and that means mental health, that means being socially um, whole, that means being spiritual, and all those other things. And those, all those other components are what make Bishop Alamany a, a great school for your family, and hopefully a choice that you continue to, to make uh, for, this, for this last year for your students. For athletics, do we need to update our immunization records and our prize accounts? Um, the prize accounts, yes. And then plus, if you are, do not have uh, an updated um, physical, 
um, that is also important as well too. Uh, but then given the, the nature of COVID and also of uh, uh, going to doctor's offices and we understand all those the trepidations a family might have, um, that really is that, that really is important and just talk to your doctors about that and making sure that happens. But yes, all those things must be updated through, through price. What conditions need to be met for students to return to campus for the two days a week? Um, so it's, that's going to be a state mandate uh, directive. So the county must um, show a trend of 14 days um, of uh, a, a downturn in terms of the COVID cases that are rising. Um, Dr. Ferrer on Monday said she was optimistic. She was she was cautiously optimistic as to what the, what's that going on, the trend that's happening now. Um, but again, that is that is out of our control in terms of what we can do. Um, those are mandates that are going to be lifted by by county health. But rest assured, as soon as that mandate is lifted, um, Bishop Alamany is ready to open its doors for our students to come back in. Will students have options to learn online, even though the hybrid model is in progress? That's, yes. So we also recognize there are certain stresses in families and different uh, situations that families are, have. Um, and then the comfort level for families in order to send their student back to school. Um, there is, we certainly recognize that. Um, and then any student that opts to continue to go remote distance learning um, may, may do so. Um, and then we've made those accommodations with the cameras in our classrooms so that they, the class will be live streamed. They can interact with their, with their teachers, um, interact with their classmates on a one-to-one -one basis through Teams and Zooms. Um, we will try to make that accommodation, we will make that accommodation as much as, as, much as possible. Sorry, how are students being separated for online and in-person classes? Is it by last name? Um, Ms. Arnold, you want to chime in on that one? Sure, absolutely. So um, in terms of being separated, we have students separated into two different groups, A or B. Um, as Mr. Domingo was saying, like your, the cardinal or the gold day um, schedule from hybrid. Um, it was done, it was not done alphabetically um, so that like when you're in a class with someone, you could be from A to Z with that student. We, um, the like our system sorted it every other person. Um, we did go back through and any students that were linked as siblings were then put into the same grouping together, um, but it's it's a completely like every other student was sorted A, B, A, B. Will ASB have elections? Yes. Will there be a date scheduled for student IDs? Um, I can answer this one actually. Um, I was just on the phone with Dan from White Studios um, and they handle our student IDs, taking the photos and um, they are in the pro we are in the process of de developing a no contact or least possible amount of contact way of doing this. Um, and more information will be available on the website as soon as we get things uh, concrete. But there's no date as of right now, but it is in the works and safety being our number one priority for that. Uh, let's see here. Is there an option to opt for only online instruction if in-person instruction is resumed? Yes. Uh, students can opt in that, just uh, notify uh, Mrs. Arnold that your family will, will be opting to stay uh, remote um, and then those accommodations will be made and then um, again the classrooms will be outfitted with cameras so they can interact with in real time um, with their teachers as well as their classmates when they are uh, studying remotely. When will the college counselor for the college application be available? Um, so I can answer this one. Um, college counselors are going to have a, a junior senior guidance night um, on August the 25th. It will be done remotely via Zoom. Um, um, so basically that will kind of be the kickoff for the college application season. Once they have that um, night hosted for families and kind of give a general overview of the process, they will then um, start immediately scheduling students for individual or small group meetings with them to go over the college application. So at the end of August on the 25th will be kind of the kickoff time for that. All right, so as I was saying earlier, my chat kind of jumps around as people leave and enter the room, and I was doing my best to kind of stay on top of it. So if we didn't get to any of your questions that you sent in, if you can please retype them now, um, we can get to them immediately. Mr. City, if you could just put up the last slide, and then I'll, before we, we, we have that, so then I can just talk about that. So uh, as you're typing in your any last final questions, I want to just again give you the calendar of upcoming events. 
Um, new Student Orientation Day for any new students or seniors coming in will be on August 11th. The first day of school will be on August 12th. It'll be a minimum day. Um, again, all the this will be done remotely. We're, we're starting remotely until 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 it's the until it's been lifted. Um, the new Family Orientation Night it will be on August 12th at 6 p.m. The Athletic Department Parent Zoom Call will be on August 13th at 6 p.m. Back to school night is August 19th, and as uh, Ms. Arnold talked about, counseling night for juniors and seniors will be on August 25th at 6.30. Uh, we did receive an additional question here. Okay. Uh, do you have any information about SATs and will they still be required? Uh, Ms. Arnold, do you wanna jump in on that one? Sorry there, let me get unmuted. <laughs> um, so most, um, many colleges um, are not requiring the SATs. Um, so there's gonna be a lot less need to take them. However, we do still have SATs and ACTs that are scheduled throughout the course of the year. Um, those will be on our school calendar, like as uh, Mr. Domingo was saying, we're going to post quarterly. Um, so those will be on the school calendar, um, but we will, like they are still conducting SATs and ACTs, um, but depending on the list of schools that your student is intending to intending to apply to, the counseling staff will let them know like, okay, this list of schools um, does not require an SAT or ACT, or you have a school on your list that does. So they'll kind of guide them as to whether or not they should be signing up for those exams. Um, and we did receive a few more, just, just two more, I believe. What is the protocol for coming back to campus if we go to hybrid classes during Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays? Will there and maybe will there be a mandatory testing to prove before going back to school? There may be families that may visit their families out of town. Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure in terms of the question, but uh, the social, the, the protocols when we come back will be dictated by, um, by county health. Um, and that also dictates when we come back as well too. Regarding vacation times, those are already plugged into our calendar. So whether we are doing it remotely or hybrid in person or full, um, those vacation days and, Thanksgiving doesn't move, so that's gonna be still the same. Christmas doesn't move, so that's gonna be the same as well too. So those are already factored into, into our calendar. Is it okay to apply to colleges and universities now, or should we wait until after August 25th? Um, Ms. Arnold, you wanna chime in on that one? Sure. Um, so there are certain applications that are not yet open, um, so that wouldn't be an option. However, if, um, if the school you're intending to apply to, if their application is open and available, it's absolutely okay to start working on those now. I would suggest um, if before you press the send button in, um, I would suggest just letting your counselor know if you're a little ahead of the game so they can review things over, just you know, chime in with you know, any helpful um, tips or whatnot that they might have. But, Absolutely, you can start the process early. Um, and if you do have questions early, I would just email your individual counselor so that they can get you a one-on-one -on -one session set up so that they can kind of help you through the process. And it looks like our last question, um, well, we have two. One's a request, let me fulfill this very quickly, about um, a parent, parent association meeting on Tuesday, um, August 11th at 7 p.m. Um, and also another reminder to uh, complete that survey. That's, and the, the link is where you found the link to this meeting. Um, but the final question is about senior portraits for, uh, for your book and just for having a, a really great senior portrait. Um, uh, coincidentally, I posted an article about that on the school website today with the information um, from White Studios. So if you go to the homepage, it's in the news section, it's called 2021 Senior Portrait Information. And there's a PDF there and you can book your appointments and all the information you need is, is there and they like you to do it um, through their website. Um, and the last, I'm oh, sorry, there is another question here. Um, maybe white students can use, I'm um, sorry, the, for this question, maybe white students can use the senior pics for ID. Um, traditionally, they use the standard pictures, but I, you know, it's definitely worth exploring. And I can discuss that with administration. Uh, so thank you for the suggestion. Um, is the correct email address for, uh, it says father, but Mr. Domingo, rdomingo at alme.org? Yes, that is correct. All right, I think, I think that's everything. Okay, again, I wanna thank um, Ms. Arnold as well as Ms. Chavez for joining us um, and also Mr. Sithi for moderating this uh, phone call or this conference call. Um, again, welcome back to school. Um, we look forward to uh, seeing our seniors back um, sooner than later. 
Um, again, as, as Ms. Chavez and Mr. Sithi and Ms. Arnold um, and myself, we really are eager to see our students and more so for our seniors. We ache to have them back on our campus. Um, Dr. Hamilton, again, sends his regrets for not being able to be here, but he sends his prayers to all of you um, and best regards and best wishes, um, especially when we are coming back in the beginning of the school year. So we hope to see the students fairly soon. We know we'll definitely see them on August 12th. Um, and again, our prayers with you and your family as we begin the school year. And if you can keep us in your prayers um, and be mindful of, of us and trying to make sure that we uh, do our best uh, to make sure that we do our best for your students and your families, um, that would be greatly appreciated. So thank you again, everyone, and we hope to see you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you.